I'm product owner of Airflow Future Team at Société Générale. I have 14 year experience in IT industry. I'm volleyball player and coach. I'm full-time father of two little daughters. And I'm still looking for my magic lamp. Mohamed. Yes, hello everyone, and I'm pretty uh, glad to be with you today. So I'm Mohamed, and I'm DevOps and Scrum Master at Airflow Team. Uh, I'm blockchain uh, lover and open source enthusiast. So you can find me on my Medium article. So just for the rest of the presentation, uh, we will spot, uh, we'll, uh, consider that SG acronym as a short name of Society General. So the next step will be just a quick short video to present uh, who we are and what are we doing at EG. So you may go. Created by entrepreneurs for entrepreneurs over 150 years ago to support the global economy, Société Générale's teams comprise 147,000 professionals of 138 nationalities in 67 countries. They draw on solid foundations and proven resilience. With a solid European footprint connected to the rest of the world, our client network is 31 million strong, encompassing corporates, individuals and financial institutions. It is founded on a trust-based and enduring relationship. We help our clients achieve their projects and we help develop the global economy thanks to our extensive advisory services and tailored financial solutions. We want to contribute to the world's transformations through our commitment to sustainable finance. To accompany the energy transition, we are withdrawing from coal financing. Doubling our renewable energy project finance by 2020, ranking number two green bond issuer in Europe in 2017, and pioneering the development of positive impact finance solutions. We are constantly innovating to enhance the client experience and are designing state-of-the-art digital solutions. The Société Générale Network in France recorded over 1 billion digital touching points this year and was named Best Client Service Provider for 2018. Leading online bank Borsarama has attracted over 1.2 million clients. With Yup, Société Générale is at the forefront of mobile banking solutions in Africa. We are also improving our staff's experience and their efficiency. The new building, Les Dunes, near Paris, is a symbol of our new way of working together. In 2017, Société Générale was ranked number two digital champion among French companies and number one bank. We capitalize on our heritage to build the future and are committed to the needs of our clients and to society as a whole. Team spirit, innovation, responsibility and commitment. These are the values we share. We are Societe Generale. We are committed to the positive transformations of our societies and economies. Go ahead. It's fine. Okay, uh, thank you, producer. So we are part of GTS Global Technology Center. It's a kind of global IT department that centralizes all shared IT services. So this slide is here to present you the number uh, of infrastructure and applicative component we are managing. So let me introduce the legacy orchestration solution we are managing at Societe General. We have worked for more than four years with legacy enterprise orchestration scheduling solution based on three main components. The first one was the marketplace. It's a kind of web UI that allows users to order uh, services. The second layer was the orchestration tools. And finally, we have a configuration management agent based tool that allow to communicate and configure physical server, ESX, VMs, and internal cloud component. So this um, 
platform was running a lot of use case. The first one was around 20,000 monthly on-demand service lifecycle management um, based on VM, network component, database, middleware. The second use case was event-based auto-remediation. An example, if we have a file system that is fulfilled and we attempt a, a threshold, there is an alert that is going to trigger a workflow that will try to find a solution to resolve that alert. Like, for example, extending the file system on removing some file depend on the situation itself. So finally, we have hundreds of thousands of scheduled exploitation workflows like patching, audit, referential update, etc. So this orchestration solution have its advantages, like we having a premium support, we have a clear view about the roadmap, we have a reliable solution, easy development way using what we call WYSIWYG, what you see, what you get. We have to drag and drop component and use some scripting, but this solution have a lot of disadvantages. I know the license cost, the code reusability, the CI/CD implementation, and the scalability itself. I'm not even talking about the vendor logs, which are the quick leave limits of this product, and we cannot customize uh, this solution or we lose our support rights. So what is the solution? So let me say open source is a powerful vector for innovation and it's essential for open banking. That's why Society General is resolutely converting to open source software. And for SG, it's not only a question of migrating our application and infrastructure to open source solutions, but is to establish a new mindset by making our IT specialists first-rate contributors. In line with this idea, our management gave us the green light to change this legacy system by realizing studies and doing some proof of concept, the only condition was to fail fast. So following GTS strategy, GTS uh, 2020, we look at two orchestration solution based on this criteria. The first one was to look for open source first, use Python language, provide programmatic services, API, for example, allow to continuous integration, delivery, and deployment. So this orchestrator have to be or must be resilient, have high availability pattern, scalable, and perhaps having a support team because it's open source. That's why we compared four solutions. Airflow, Widgie, Azkaban, and DigDag, and we look into the uh, futures. We look into the scheduling trigger, we look into high availability pattern, we look into the API, the UI, how to manage log, how to monitor that, and perhaps we look into the community. And as you see here, the community of Airflow is doing awesome. That's why the result of this study led us to choose Airflow Orchestrator, which was the most suitable to meet our needs. And here we created a future team following Agile Scrum framework, whose main responsibility was onboarding, to drive internal community, and to provide managed services. As for onboarding, we do a lot of live demo to present this framework, and we provide and maintain a kind of sandbox that uh, contain the same element uh, as the production environment to facilitate developer integration. And this gives them the possibility to get their hand dirty in Airflow. Finally, we organize a lot of workshops with different teams to identify their use case and give them advice about how to implement and if Airflow fit to their, to their need or not. We animate the community by providing internal documentation and tutorials. This was a very important as Airflow documentation was huge for some topics and very light for others. And we manage a repository for internal common artifacts that contain operators and hooks that avoid to, retreat, to reinvent the wheel and to focus on enhancing them. We are working with different SG developers to define development best practices like naming convention and get a kind of quick start kit. 
Finally, we deliver managed instances. It's like production ready Airflow instances. And as you see here in this slide, we deliver a lot. Here we have 30 running Airflow instance with more than 5 million executions since the last year. And we focus perhaps on onboarding DevOps team to know how to use these platforms. Sure. The support, as we said in the study, is very important. And as Wegner Vogel said, you build it, you run it. So we have to figure out how to provide internal support to answer to our users or contributors' need. So let me present to you the first implementation of this configuration at Societe General. First of all, let me explain how we use it on the first approach. So a user can consume Airflow going throughout a load balancer that is pointing to different uh, servers. These servers are hosting what we call a web server services and scheduler services. We can trigger uh, a DAG using a web server UI. We can use the API. We can use the CLI. And this request going, is going to be registered into the meta database. And on the other side, we have the scheduler that is pulling continuously to look if there is something to execute. And it's going to read that request, push appropriate messages to RabbitMQ broker. On the other side, we have the workers that are continuously pulling for messages, looking on their queue of specialities of their priorities, and they will execute the work and they will give back the result to what we call a backend result DB. So our first implementation was based on VM. As you can see on this diagram, we have a traffic manager that distributes the traffic between two load balancer that in their turn distribute to a VM group. For data persistency, we use it split Postgres database, what we call meta database and backend result, replicated on different availability zone. For broker, we are using stretched RabbitMQ with queue mirroring. And finally, we have workers layer that execute the work. So let's look how we integrated so Airflow into Societe General ecosystem. Here on the right side, we have a developer that can use a sandbox to develop his workflow. Once it's done, he can push a release into internal GitHub. This will trigger CICD pipeline. If integration is green, we deliver and deploy his release in, on his dedicated Airflow instance. Once deployment is done, Airflow can be triggered using portal, API, or a scheduler. And the workflow can orchestrate tasks between different SG services. Then log will be pushed to internal data lake, and the result can be uh, provided to customer with different ways like mail, tickets, or maybe the same way he ordered the service. Let's zoom a little bit into our CI/CD. This system was very useful for developers as they can focus on their business workflow development. One. Airflow instance can be shared between multiple developer or multiple teams. All what they have to do is just to release on their repository. All artifacts will be gathered on common one. Artifacts will be deployed automatically into dev environment. If need, it can be deployed to staging or production environment. This first implementation led us to a bunch of success story. The first one was financial by saving more than 1 million euro. The use case was about managing the entire life cycle of risk calculation solution based on more than 5,000 physical server and delays. We have to start, stop, install, and maintain operating system and risk calculation tools and middleware. We uh, get to answer to a big challenge on this first use case that was to run 250 parallel tasks to reduce the lease cost. And this was very useful for the second success story, which was to enhance the time to market from some hours to some minutes. Finally, the most important achievement for us was to make an open source framework as a standard of orchestration for a production banking environment. I will let Mohammed continue the presentation. Okay, thank you, Aladdin. So um, as Airflow got a huge success, we start looking how to provide a cloud solution 
on demand one. So the first step was to take a look on what happened on the community. So we look at the major cloud provider. It was mainly Amazon, Azure, and Google Cloud Composer, especially Google who have an orchestration solution built on the top of Airflow. After this, we took a look into some past offers such as Astronomal and Cubol, but for the moment, uh, most of them didn't meet our internal uh, requirement for security one. That's why it led us to provide an internal service. We call it Airflow as service. So what does this service mean? It is an in-demand Airflow instance provided on internal SG platform. So the customer will be the entire developer and DevOps team. The product itself will be a fully managed container Airflow instance. We use the container to leverage the power of Airflow for scalability one to reduce the cost also. And for the hosting part, for sure, it will be hosted entirely on SG and on the entire network. So how we manage to do that? B before going deep, we have to look into two major points, which are the control and resource plan. So the first, one is the control plan. Let's take a real example. So as developer, I will request our internal API to provision a new instance. I will authenticate through our internal system, which is IAM1. After this, it will forward all those inputs. It can be the name of the instance, the size itself, the number of the worker. The main workflow will trigger an Airflow instance. After this, I can again request that Airflow instance to access to it, which means I can use that Airflow UI and also an API one. So let's take a deep look into the first part, which is the control plane API. So it is quite a simple one. We have that major endpoint, the rest one. Maybe we can focus on the instance one. So the instance one is the one that will be used to provision the instance. And also we can update it. And at the, at the top of it, we have some queue and user one for configuration purpose. So once a user is asking that uh, provision endpoint, it will trigger an entire workflow. So how we concrete this? So as a client, I will ask our cloud platform portal. It's Amazon-like marketplace, but internally at ESG. It will forward the request to our control plane API. Once we did this, we will put all the information into the provisioning workflow. So for this part, we are dog food in Airflow, which means we are using Airflow to provision Airflow. The entire workflow is described into a DAG itself. Once the workflow is triggered, we will look into the dependencies. So the dependencies can be like the version of Airflow, and also we will look for that data asset. As Airflow using Celery Executor, we will have to have a broker metadata and the backend result. After this, once we gathered all these information, we will simply push them to Kubernetes. So we will host all the, those services. So as we are working on the API side, we have to maintain that control plane database so the user can request again to get more information about his request. So big question, so how we will host this? It's quite simple. We said that we will go for full container. So for this, we use the internal service. We are still look for some other team, the Kubernetes one, and we are proposing all the service under Kubernetes. We have that control plane made by Python, and we have an Airflow application. It will be used to provision Airflow. We are look for also some other services as we are using consuming Postgre and RabbitMQ. And we are pushing logs into some external services, internal one, such as Metrology. So once I provided all these instance, I have to consume it. As you know, we have that basic Airflow UI, we have the experimental API, but we leverage the power of the Airflow API. We developed a new one. So this one can uh, give us the possibility to have uh, more operation over the DAG. And the special endpoint is the deployment one. So this endpoint will be used specifically by the developer in order to push new artifacts, which means once I develop a new DAG or I have some dependencies, it can be a Python package or a system one. I will request this endpoint. And we add also two other ones, which is variable connection. It's um, helpful for CI/CD purpose. For the hosting part, we're still using the same things, container everywhere. So we are using Kubernetes to host most of them. And for the data part, we are using PG and RabbitMQ. But you clearly see that we added a new service. We call it controller, 
We will see later what is the purpose behind this. As my colleague already present, we need that all the dependencies must be everywhere on the web server part, the scheduler, the worker. Once we migrate into a container, we change the deployment strategy. In fact, we are basing our dependencies and injecting them into the image. We are using a first layer, which is um, internal CentOS one. At the top of it, we are adding that Airflow main requirement. It will be only the package one. Once a developer is asking for a new deployment, we are just adding those dependencies. It can be Python model, or it can be more than this, variable, system one, Python also. And at the end, we are using that new fresh image to expose other services. So let's go ahead and take a look into the controller. This is a masterpiece of that deployment strategy. So we will take a real example. I'm a new developer, and I have all a package to be pushed into the Airflow instance. I will ask that resource plan API to deploy a new package. It will put that event into the queue. The controller will pull again and again over that RabbitMQ. queue. Once he takes that there is a new event, he will ask a scaffold, which is a tool provided by, hosted by Google. Uh, it simplifies the work with Kubernetes pipeline. We will just build a new image with all those dependencies. And after this, we will deploy it over that Kubernetes cluster. So it's clear, clear that Airflow lead us to leverage the power and simplify the needed work for orchestration. But we faced many issue. So this part, we will discuss most of them and say how we managed to fix them. So the first one, we clearly see that Airflow is active may say also it's very active community. So it's one hand, it have a quite great uh, uh, contribution, which means we will have a huge engagement regarding the bugs, the future. But in the other hand, it have big pain point over the team. So we should follow up and be able to up, uh, update our release with that upstream. Second one is more related to how we will deploy that Airflow artifact. In fact, in the community, there is no clear guideline how to do it well in the prod environment. But Airflow have a native Git sync solution. It's an easy to use. But there is lack integration with CI CD, which means that hook uh, purpose, we cannot do rollback properly. And we will tight uh, Git dependencies, which means we have to look into that Git SLA. The solution that we propose first is to use Jenkins and Ansible to be able to deploy over all the VM. But as we switch the offer from VM to container, we are working on that strategy based on the image. The second one was regarding the experimental API. So as you know, Airflow has it is Flask application that have a built-in API. It's easy to expose. We don't even know some extra layer such as proxy. But we cannot trigger multiple unique DAG. There is lack of documentation and the minimal endpoint. So to bypass this, we did an internal development regarding Airflow to be able to propose and fix all this issue. It's time for Scheduler. So as you know, Scheduler has a central role over the stack Airflow. So without a running Scheduler, no task will be executed. So to manage this, we started our journey by dogfooding what Clairvoyant company is providing, which is a simple script that will assure that failover controller, but it has some limitation regarding the scalability. After this, we looked forward and we integrated that console with that raft algorithm. And at some point, we took the risk. We say we will run Scheduler everywhere on Active. It works for the moment. It's magic. Last but not least, we pimped our Airflow. So as an Airflow user, you know that Airflow has a lot of configuration. We have a lot of parameters to be set to calibrate. So to do that, we used an open source tool we call Locus to do a kind of load test with stress tool. We gathered all that metrics, and we will be able to define and to run at least 1,000 parallel execution of DAG. But it seems that using Airflow with that Celery executor, it have some 
disadvantage regarding the connection and the scalability. Once we need to ask for more worker, for more salary process, it will lead to get more connection. So how we manage this? So the first implementation was quite simple. We used one simple cluster that will host that meta, meta and backend DB. And we use it as a single cluster for RabbitMQ. But at some point, when we scale out that worker, it seems that we reach the maximum number of connection. So the second step was to split both of those DB. So we use two different cluster. So in that case, that number of connection will be split over two different cluster. And what we are doing now is we are looking to use RabbitMQ as backend result. So we will raise all that uh, number of collection. So it's almost over. Uh, last but not least, uh, we will share with you what we identify as a major key to, um, to success that integration of an open source um, journey. So the first of it is to choose wisely. Be able to fail fast. Poke as much as is needed. Choose the right solution. Look for some cloud native pattern, programmatic one. The second one is more work regarding the organization and the human one. We should trust people and sponsor the idea. After this, um, the, ma the, the major concept is dog food in one, which means we have to look to consume what other people is providing. It can be internally on the team. So in our case, we are using our own Airflow to provision instance, and we are consuming also what other team is providing, such as RabbitMQ, PGS, or Kubernetes. It can be external one, as we did with Skidder, using that clairvoyant failover mechanism or scaffold one. And at the end, having that open source spirit and engagement behind using an open source uh, product and be able to be engaged and share as much as possible. So as conclusion, Airflow is great and powerful tool, powerful framework. It needs a tough work on both sides. It can be an organization mindset one, a technical part also to make it more available for critical environment. So I can definitely say at this stage, so we are glad to be a part of this community. We clearly did the right choice. So I hope it was very clear for you. It's time for question. Thank you, Mohammed and Aladdin for the awesome talk. Uh, we have a question for you. Uh, how are you handling separation, isolation, security between different teams? I may answer to this. So for the first, uh, um, as the integration, uh, we started um, using one single instance with multiple team. But it seems that it's heavy work to be able to uh, split them as we are working on a um, banking environment, production one, we have to create some changes. So that leads us to split it. And for each specific team, we are given a dedicated instance. So at this stage, each, each team is uh, accountable about uh, their own security. They, they can create their own uh, convention regarding uh, the versioning part. Yeah, the, the second question is, how do you handle uh, updates? So when you, really, when you update to a new Airflow version, how do you do that? I will let Aladdin maybe answer to this. We uh, take the decision to create new Airflow instance every time we have to update to avoid any complexity because we have a very sensitive production environment. And the idea here was to create a new instance. The customer or the contributor will test his workflow to into, into different environment, different stages. And once he's sure about his workflow, don't have any impact and everything is green, he's going to switch from the previous version to the new version. Got it. Um, in that case, thank you guys very much for the awesome talk. Um, for all the folks who are listening to us, the next talk will start in 10 minutes, so don't go anywhere. Uh, you'll be automatically carried over to the next talk uh, in a few minutes. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ah, so yes. We just, yes. Yeah, we, we just received a few more questions. We, uh, 
how many people and teams do you serve? I will answer this. <laughs> uh, today we um, we onboarded around 15, uh, 50 teams. Sorry, and uh, not every team uh, is going to production because sometimes they find that it's very complicated to what they want to do, or maybe sometimes they don't have the Python skills. And today we have uh, clearly thirty running instance of Airflow, and um, we cannot calculate by by people. The community is very changing. I will uh, say that we have around 150 developer inside Society General that know and master Airflow, and they are doing the development. And what is very interesting on the mindset we we install it here is that I'm not calling the the my colleague uh, users or customers. We are calling them contributors. We are trying to install that mindset of community inside Society General, as we said, to be in, in phase of the strategy of open source of Society General. Thank you. Uh, we have another question. Why do you need to deploy artifacts into Airflow, like new Python packages? Would you be able to instead run all your workloads as separate microservices and use Airflow only for scheduling? Okay, I will answer to this. In fact, at ESG, we are running Airflow under Celery Executor. And as you know, uh, all Airflow services need to get those dependencies uh, in, in order to be able to run those DAG, which means as a new developer, if I have my Python package um, and also I have my Python module, I may have some other dependencies such as uh, system one, I may have some variable in variable, in variable to be injected. So we took all the de this dependencies and injected everywhere uh, where the, those services need need them. So that's why we are pushing all the artifact everywhere. Uh, I hope that was clear for this. Yep. Uh, any plans of contributing your internal plugins operators to open source? For sure, there is ongoing work internally in order to contribute to uh, our community. But as you know, working in banking environment, there is some process to be respected. <laughs> we, we will be waiting for you. Now that you said it, I will hold you accountable for that. <laughs> uh, another question is, how many concurrent diagrams are you able to achieve right now? 1,000 parallel DAG. No, parallel task, Mohammed. We can run more Par para parallel DAGs. <laughs> yes, parallel task. <laughs> yes, actually, after the benchmark, we realized we successfully reached 1,000 parallel tasks. For DAGs, we didn't crush it yet, the, um, the, the solution. Always the task side was the limits. So what we did, we set up what we call a soft limits on our Airflow instances to limit it from the hard limit when, to avoid any crush on real uh, environment. Uh, another question is how many people in the company are working full time on Airflow and the related infrastructure? On the related infrastructure, we are working as yep. future team on Airflow, but um, we, so we are not developing all that DAG and workflow for the client. We are just provisioning that mechanism to provision Airflow. So I can say we are at least 10 people working on Airflow, but all that ecosystem needs some developer from other team to develop their own workflow. So, Yes, uh, I, will, uh, I will confirm that. So we are 10 people on the future team and we are uh, responsible uh, by on providing the Airflow instances. We are responsible on the uh, CI/CD, and as I told you, we are here to animate and to help people. So we are providing uh, first-level support uh, to the um, contributors, and we um, uh, we are developing some DAGs for our need. As Mohammed said, we are we we build a new. Airflow offer and to answer to that offer for orchestration purpose, we are using DAGs. So we do what we call a dog fooding. Okay. Um, did you face any challenges when you were scaling up to 1000 tasks uh, at a time? 
a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but as I already mentioned, the main issue was related to that uh, metadata and backend result. The fact that for the first implementation, we used one single cluster. So the main work was on that uh, PIMP session to define what will be the best configuration to also to understand what is the purpose behind this variable, behind this configuration. Um, so it was a, a huge work and it's, it, it will be uh, always a continuous enhancement for, for this part. Yeah, another challenge we faced uh, during this benchmark and this uh, pushing of the configuration of Airflow to go to 1,000 tasks is the sizing of the workers. Actually, we have the chance to get a dynamic cloud uh, solution internally. And what we did here, we scaled out uh, like the number of workers. We scaled and uh, changed the model of the VM. Like we pushed even the number of virtual uh, CPU and the memory, the amount of memory. But what is sure Airflow is here for orchestration. It's not here to process. There is a better tool for that. So we advise uh, people and contributors well, while we do that workshops to push them to use appropriate tool. Airflow is magic. Airflow is very good for orchestration, but there is more powerful tool for processing. So that was the role of our future team. Uh, do you use Kubernetes executor? Not for the moment. <laughs> we hope we will use it soon. Uh, yeah. Any, any reason for using RabbitMQ instead of Redis? Yes, there is a quite big reason. Um, at first, we use it Redis with that Sentinel mechanism to be able to have that high availability. But at some point, there is a team inside EG that start providing RabbitMQ. So we say, oh, uh, let's dog food what other is providing. And that's why we took the RabbitMQ and we injected into our stack. Uh, and the question is, was there a need to terminate a running DAG? Uh, Sorry, what is the question? Uh, I didn't see. Just a second. Yeah, no problem. Ignore, ignore that one, please. Um, any more questions? Okay. Let's give let's give a few seconds. Uh, yeah. So, what is the machine configurations when you were able to scale to thousand bags or tasks? Actually, we use it six workers VM with uh, 32 gigabyte memory and 12 vCPU. And we use it uh, RabbitMQ broker uh, with um, four vCPU, eight gigabyte memory. And we use it um, uh, database with um, 16 gigabyte memory and eight vCPU. And also we leverage the maximum number of connection of each DB into yes. uh, 400. Yes. That's why we use it, uh, such amount of memory. Uh, did you use any kind of uh, tools like PJ Bouncer for managing connections? Yes, there is work on this. This will be the next enhancement to reduce that number of connection because the internal mechanism of Airflow pulling, we, we, we look into how to enable it. We started working on this during that PIMP session, but still crashed the database. So the next enhancement will be to add that puller. It's maybe page answer for the moment. Uh I saw, I saw a question about what upcoming Airflow future are the most exciting for you. Mohammed, I let you answer. <laughs> or all of them, I will say. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Glad, glad you are excited. <laughs> Actually, the idea is that we want to contribute and we are subscribed to the workshop next week to, to push our first uh, um, uh, release or maybe commit. Uh, another question is about, can you repeat the reasons why you did go with available solutions like Google or Astronomer? I will answer this one. Uh, actually, we are working on a banking environment and there is a regulator that imposes some security uh, rules. 
and following that security rules for now we cannot use uh, external services like that and even for example if we try to use external component uh, that have to be validated by security team and reviewed by security team and that's a, another challenge for us but there is a uh, non going work with astronomer so in order to can so we can raise those uh, issue and as we already um, showed on that presentation of the product itself for the moment we are using airflow for internal purpose but the target itself is use airflow for hybrid one so we may use uh, one of them for that uh, public uh, operation yeah there is ongoing discussion even for maybe a sort of support or L2, L3, something like that. So um, the, the door is still open, but the discussion is remaining there with security guys. Uh, do you use something for data lineage for your DAGs uh, to account for GDPR? Um... Can you repeat again, please? Uh, do you use or create any kind of data lineage uh, for your DAGs? We are not uh, working on that feature. We didn't, man we didn't manage to take a look into that Airflow lineage uh, for the moment. So as we are more focused on provisioning an Airflow instance rather than developing workflow. Yeah, actually, it's the responsibility of the contributors who want to develop some workflow. They have to figure out if they attach to GDPR, they have to take this in charge. Mm 